Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm excited to bring you a beginner series of lessons using one set of pastels. I recently purchased the Unison 120 half stick set and I actually did a little product review on it. You might want to go back and check out that video. And in this pastel painting tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to create this painting using only this particular Unison set. Now, I want to give you some information real quickly that I've found out since the last video. This is the set. It is made by Unison. I love Unison pastels. They are soft and buttery, but they don't crumble too much. I shared in the last video that you can find them at Jackson's. Uh, Dick Blick Art Supply doesn't have the 120 set. Jackson has them for about $2.55, and I found out from my Australian subscribers that it's very expensive in Australia so I'll give you another option coming up soon. The set I'll be using can also be found at Dakota Art or Dakota Pastels and I believe there it's 322. Keep in mind that some of these are on back order so it might take you a couple of weeks to get them. I did also find the 120 uh, half stick set at Jerry's Artorama. Let me scroll through here. It is uh, well, also, too, I'm showing a, a few other different half-stick sets you can get. You can get the 30 set that's $88. You can get the, what was that one, 60 for 160 That's 63, I'm sorry, half-sticks for 166 Or you can get the 120 half-stick set for 313 I think that says I have to put my glasses on. So they're all around $300. It does seem that Jackson's has the best price, but they're on back order. One of our Australian members has shared with me that even though the Unison are so expensive, she found that Sennelier Soft Pastel was available a little bit more affordable in Australia, and they have a very nice uh, half-stick set as well. Another alternative might be the Jack Richeson half-stick set. They have a 120 half-stick set, and I like Jack Richeson pastels. I do find they're a little bit harder than the Sennelier or the Unison. Thank you for bearing with me during those product descriptions. I just felt so bad for our Australian subscribers. I wanted to give a, an alternative. All right, what I'll be using here is I'm gonna be creating my own pastel surface. I'm using a different product here, but you guys can use watercolor paper if you like. I'm using these sheets that I get from Arteza. Uh, it's an acrylic pad, and I actually really like making my own surfaces with these. Uh, the pad has, or the each page has two sides. Of course it has two sides, but one side is almost uh, like a weave, a texture, and the back side is smooth. So I'll be using the smooth side. So, But just imagine this as a piece of watercolor paper. And I'm using acrylic inks to tone the paper. I want to get a nice golden uh, color for the kind of like a one color tonal underpainting. All you need is a brush for this. Now I'm going to give you some other alternatives. You don't have to have acrylic ink. I know not everybody has the same things I'll be using. You could also just use a golden colored pastel for this and all you would do would be to uh, basically just rub the pastel over your watercolor paper um, just kind of a, a light to medium pressure and then you could grab either water or alcohol in a little dish and you will um, brush it on the pastel just to coat it all and then let your paper dry so you have another option rather than using the acrylic inks like I'm going to be doing you also could use watercolor. I show Arteza products a lot because they're so great. They give me free products to show in my videos. Uh, but again, you could pick kind of a golden color. And uh, I like using the golden color when I'm doing landscapes. I want to keep this simple. I didn't want to do a complicated underpainting, but I don't want to work on the white paper. Let's, let's move, remove that. Now, to create our own surface, after we get that golden underpainting, I will be using clear gesso. Clear gesso has a little bit of grit to it. Regular gesso does not, so don't use regular gesso. And what the clear gesso does is after we brush it on, I'll talk more about it, it gives a nice little grit for your pastels to hold on to. Okay, so again, I'm going to be taping this down here, but I'll talk while I do that. Again, you just need some watercolor paper, either a gold colored pastel or a watercolor that's kind of golden color or whatever you have. And we're gonna tone the whole piece of watercolor or whatever surface you decide to work on. Again, we're making our own homemade pastel surface so that beginners, you, you may not have pastel paper. Um, if you're not sure about what sanded papers are, 
they can get very expensive. And this is a more affordable alternative before you go out and spend a whole lot of money on a product that, you know, what if you don't like it? So this is kind of a neat way for beginner pastel artists to get the results or somewhat the results from uh, using a sanded surface, which, which really is a great way to work with pastels. Now I'm using black tape here um, just because I have a blackboard, but you may have noticed I put a piece of black tape on the back sides of the paper uh, with the sticky side is facing front. And then I put another piece of tape um, just right where the sticky part is and a little bit uh, above it to stick to the board. That way I'm able to paint on the entire surface without, uh, sometimes I do like to make a little border around it, but you may wanna tape your paper down if you're working with watercolor paper. Oops, I'm sorry, I hit my camera and it's wiggling. Um, because watercolor paper can warp. So um, if you're familiar with that, sometimes it's a good idea to do that. Okay, now time for the fun. I love this part. The acrylic ink I'm using is made by Daler Rowney. I'm using a color called Indian Yellow and Fluorescent Pink. Now I could have just used the Indian Yellow. I mean, it's a nice, gorgeous, golden color. But I found from another painting I did that just a little drop of that fluorescent pink uh, really makes it an interesting uh, golden yellow color. So you don't have to do this. Uh, I'm, and of course, again, if you don't have acrylic inks, just use what you have. There are lots of uh, possibilities and alternatives to this process. Now, I find, see how that color turned out? That little bit of pink in it makes it really neat looking. Um, so I'm just applying this on the back of my uh, piece of paper that's in the acrylic uh, pad, but I could do the same thing with watercolor paper and I have many, many times. I found out that I Actually, I'm, I'm so darn conservative with things because I've had to be in my life that sometimes I just don't give myself enough or I'm trying to be so careful and not wasteful. So I wish I had put a few more drops in my little container and I, I actually do end up doing that to, to cover it. Now it doesn't, I could have worked with it like this. It doesn't matter. I'm covering it up with pastel anyway. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more as I paint about why, why do we put this color down. Why didn't I just put the clear gesso down and start painting? So I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Now it's dry and it's nice and smooth. And if I were to put pastels down now or start painting, I could paint a little bit, but pastels need some grit to hang on to. And that's where this product comes in. As I was saying, regular gesso does not have the grit and also regular gesso is not clear. So whatever underpainting you put down, it's not gonna show through. You're gonna paint white right over it. So the clear gesso is multi-purpose. And I'm going to basically just put on a thin coat. I've heard some people put on two coats. I just did one for this particular example. And also it's going to um, make it sanded. Like I said, it gives you a little sanded surface, but some people find it's a, a little too bumpy. So I didn't do this in this video, but when it's dry, once you apply the clear gesso and it's dry, if you want it to be a little bit um, more smooth and less textural, I happen to like texture, you can get a piece of fine uh, sandpaper and just sand it down lightly and you'll get a little bit more of that smooth surface um, in case you don't like the real textured look. You just saw the image there on my iPad of the reference photo I'll be using, which is from pmp-art.com. It's a great resource for finding reference material. If you don't have a lot of photography yourself, or if you'd like to find something, you know, different from what you can find in your own backyard, it's a neat way to work. Now, what I'll be doing right now is I have my little piece of paper here. I'm going to do a quick little value study and talk about it with you guys. I've sped this up just to save time, but it actually kind of helps speeding it up so I can kind of show you very quickly how we're just looking at big shapes. I've got, of course, that big shape of the front tree there. I've got uh, kind of like a little dark path I'm creating to draw interest into it. I know I'm going to have some flowers, and so I'm just kind of quickly sketching in the general composition. Again, big shapes. It often helps to shrink your reference photo down because you can identify the big shapes better. Now I've just got a charcoal pencil here and I'm just laying it on its side. I have um, 
actually carved out my pencil where my lead is a little bit longer and I'm getting in the darker values now those trees in the background because they're far away they're not going to be as dark in value so I didn't press down quite as hard I know my grasses are a little bit darker than the sky um, so but I didn't want to get them too dark so now I'm just using my finger to blend and notice there's basically going to be four different values the darkest dark is the tree in the path the next darkest dark would be the background trees. I actually darken them up a little more than that. The grasses would be the next value, and the sky will be the last lightest value. So now, same thing. I'm going to sketch it in here. And it, I do recommend that you do a little initial sketch. It really does help you feel more comfortable when you go to sketch it in again. So again, one big tree there, kind of up at the top right corner. Then we've got our little trees in the background. They don't have to be too specific because they're far away. A little path we're going to darken that up and some flowers I end up kind of covering up my flowers um, but I know I I can add them to the top uh, usually it's a good idea to leave space for your flowers if they're going to be really big mine are kind of small so it kind of didn't matter if I covered them up um, all right now I've got my nice gritty surface because of the clear gesso and I'm ready to begin I want to kind of show you guys some of the pastels that I'm choosing now the nice thing about this set is it has some really good darks. Notice I chose three darks. They're kind of a burgundy, a dark blue, and a dark purple. I know I'm going to need some greens. I've got kind of a darker green and then two other medium greens. There's my blues. And don't worry if that seemed fast. I'm going to talk about a little more here. Here's regular speed. And now you can see those three darks that I have. And getting your darks established is a good idea with pastel painting because we typically can work dark to light. It's the opposite of watercolor. Watercolor, you want to preserve the light um, and gradually, carefully add your darks. But with pastels, because you can layer, because we put down this clear gesso, we have the ability to lighten things up. And the darkness gives depth to things. Now, I am speeding this up, but not so much that you can't see. I have to keep my video file size down to be able to upload it so you guys can actually see the video. And uh, I'm using the darker blue dark. That's one thing I do love about this Unison set is they have some decent darks in it. And some sets really don't have that. Um, it just depends on the set. So I've just gotten the darkest dark scent, the trail in the tree. Now I'm going to... Uh, intensify the dark and give it a little more interest by adding the other dark, uh, the more of the burgundy dark to it. It really just makes those colors kind of vibrate against each other. And uh, in nature, we have a lot of colors playing together. They're not always just one color um, next to another color. They're often commingled together. So now I've gotten a little bit more of those darks established. I'm going to go and get a value for the background trees. Uh, I'm actually going to darken them up. They're a little bit too um, green right now, and but I was really thinking of the value. Things don't stay warm in the distance. They cool off like mountains in the distance. They look blue. Um, so I'm going to cool those off in a minute. But right now, I, I want to down at the bases of the trees is usually where you get more shadows. So I'm giving more of the depth in value down at the bases of the trees. Now I know that again they're going to be a little cooler um, so I'm getting that darker blue. I don't want to lighten it up too quickly and I'm just layering. I call this scumbling. I'm just kind of, uh, I'm not drawing. Um, I'm just adding, turning the pastel on its side and um, uh, now I'm adding a little bit more uh, coolness to the trees that are gradually getting further away. And now this is a little chamois cloth. And I've recently found that I like using this. I wasn't sure if I could use it on the homemade surface with the clear gesso, but lo and behold, I found out I could. There's some surfaces this technique doesn't work with, such um, uh, as UART paper. It's a little bit too sanded, but it does work well on this homemade surface. Also works well on pastel mat. So it really just kind of blends in what you've done, softens it a bit, gives it a little bit more, uh, softens the edges, a little bit more of an impressionistic feel. Uh, I've got my trees in the back there kind of all too much in a row. They look too uh, equidistant apart, so 
I'll fiddle with that in a minute, but you might want to keep that in mind. Give some variety to your trees. Give some uh, differences in the spaces and the spacing so they don't look so um, set, man-made, you know. Um, all right, now I'm reestablishing the dark in this tree. Um, just to bring it forward, it definitely is the darkest thing in this um, painting. So same thing with the trail, um, just gradually um, uh, decreasing the intensity as it goes back. Um, but now I've got my um, basics down. Now let's go work on the next color and value. Now what did we have left? We have those grasses and the sky. Um, so why am I not grabbing green, right? Well, I'm getting some warmth to put those grasses down on. That, um, that ground is still too light um, to start applying the grasses. I need to give it some uh, medium value color. And uh, using a orange or a reddish color really gives your grasses something to contrast with complementary color. If you look at a color wheel, the opposite of whatever color you're looking at is the colors complement. And for greens on the color wheel, the opposite color is red or orange, something that's a little more warm. So by putting down the red as the middle value, it gives the green something to contrast with and create more interest because of because of it being its complement on the color wheel. So now my greens are going to appear a little more vibrant. Um, I am working with it. My um, underpainting and my clear gesso actually ended up being very textural. That's why I recommend it. If you'd like to knock down the texture a little bit, you can get a fine piece of sandpaper and just sand it off a bit. So I was kind of working with a lot of texture here. Um, but anyway, so I got my darkest green down a little bit more in the foreground grasses and a little bit in that tree. And the reason I got my darker greens in the foreground grasses is because value is darker the closer something is to us and then it decreases to a lighter value in the distance now also in the reference photo the sun happened to be shining to where that backfield just was a lot lighter the sun was shining on it and it was pretty green i know it's further away so i decided to go ahead and uh, get a green that was kind of light um, to go uh, really uh, liven up those uh, background grasses back there, even though typically things cool off in the distance. Um, I really liked kind of how that sun was shining and making it look so bright and vibrant. All right, so really that's been um, pretty quick so far and we're starting to see things take shape. Notice too, I haven't focused at all on drawing anything. I am just creating shapes. I am turning my pastel over on its side, if you can't see because of, of my hand. Uh, most of what I've done is the pastel on the side and I you learn to kind of finagle the pastel um, sometimes to lift up the back end of it if you don't need the whole width of the pastel um, but really I'm just making shapes and now I've got to I know I've got to do the sky but I kind of want to get in a, a cooler like a back uh, maybe level of trees or things back behind there and they're going to be a little lighter in value and a little cooler in color. So I'm just kind of scumbling in as if there was another like row of trees back there uh, before I get my uh, sky color in. And that distant row of trees could be mountains, okay? So it's really so impressionistic that you don't have to specify exactly what it is. And usually that's the way things work in the distance anyway. Now I'm just carving in um, with uh, alternating between some of the cooler lighter value blues and the sky and when you do this negative painting it's called you're carving in what's called sky holes uh, instead of drawing the branches of the trees you paint negatively using the sky to carve out the trees instead so it's kind of a neat and fun way to work and you know if this all feels very strange to you it did to me at first when I first started doing this. Okay, now you can see I'm adding a little bit of lighter values, kind of establishing that tree as being a little bit of an evergreen tree. I am kind of using, this pastel doesn't have a point, but I'm lifting it up more on the, the rounded edge at the front just to have made those little uh, scumbling kind of tree marks. I appreciate the feedback you guys have given me about um, how you like me laying my 
uh, surface flat so you can actually see my pastels it's easier for you to see everything I apologize that often my left-handed technique sometimes my hand is in the way where you can't really see the marks I'm making this is uh, so I apologize so I'm doing the best I can with the filming um, I had someone uh, give a feedback to one of my videos and said you you know you've really some great instruction in this video but you need to tell your cameraman <laughs> that they need to change their angle sometimes and I, I tried to sweetly write back, I'm a one-man show, I'm the camera man, woman, slash, artist, everything, uh, editor, videographer, <laughs> so, you know, you just do the best you can, so, um, anyway, I'll try to get better, though. Now, notice how I'm adding that middle value, cooler blue, uh, kind of uh, a little bit around the trail, and in some of those foreground grasses, just kind of uh, gently laying it down within um, some of the areas where there might be some depth to the grasses and that cooler color really does represent kind of shadowy areas to the grasses and I feel like they're kind of shadowy shadowy to the lower left um, now uh, oh also here's the purple that I pulled out too purple makes a beautiful shadow color this is a nice um, kind of darker not super dark purple but um that's within the um unison set that i really like i'm just um uh, gently adding some purple um, again within the path just kind of here and there where there might be a little more depth to the grasses i want to be real careful back there maybe just some of those trees that are closer i think i end up lightening that up even a little just a little bit back in there because if I get it too dark back there, it's going to pull those trees too close. And um, again, I think I, I even lighten it up a little bit more later. Um, but I wanted to kind of reestablish that a little bit. Now, real quickly, can you see how the golden color of the paper really makes this look beautiful? Can you also see hints of that uh, more of an orangey kind of red that I put down? You see how color is starting to um, become more magical when we play with it and learn some of these rules. Now, I'm going to work on the flowers now. I wanna mention this set has some gorgeous reds. These reds that I'm gonna be working with right now would be considered cooler reds. Um, they don't have as much uh, warmth in them as some of the other reds that were in that row that you saw. If you want a little bit more of a uh, detail on this particular set, see the video that I posted, I think it's just before this one, where I do a review and kind of talk about the different colors and values in this particular set. Now the flowers will work similar to some of the other concepts where I'm actually going to put down a darker value of red before I um, turn on the light, so to speak, and I'm just putting flowers in kind of randomly, but not too randomly. Let me explain what I mean. Often when we just kind of aren't thinking and we start just dotting flowers here and there, we have a tendency to put them in a prescribed pattern. Um, kind of like I started with those trees in the background and we want to vary it up a bit. Um, I call it forced randomness <laughs> and sometimes you want like I, I know in the background where that main tree is there were some further away and of course we know they're going to get smaller in the distance but there were some that were kind of peaking up taller than the rest so you want to develop some variety and a harmony but not a pattern if that makes sense uh, patterns become monotonous and boring and uh, I mean, we don't want it all crazy, willy-nilly everywhere, uh, but when you can follow the basic rules and then give it some spice and variety, then that makes your painting much more interesting. Now, this is the red that is just gorgeous. Uh, and even though with my homemade surface, sometimes you think, well, you probably won't get as much layering as one of the um, uh, store-bought or art supply store-bought sanded papers like UART and uh, Sennelier and so many other pastel paper, sanded pastel paper choices. But actually, I am still getting pretty good layering here. And I kind of want my flowers a little soft anyway. I wanted to mention too that I know I don't have the reference photo showing the whole time here while I'm painting. I showed a little clip of it at the beginning. And I'm trying to abide by um, the PMP rules. Um, 
when I show an image from the pmp-art.com site, I usually try to show it small and, you know, encourage you guys to go uh, check it out. But if you'd like to find this particular reference photo, you can go to pmp-art.com and the person who shared this, her name is Tam Tam, T-A-M dash T-A-M, and uh, she has some lovely reference photos. Now, I will provide the image to my patrons. I'll have it attached um, to the video link that I share on my Patreon page. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it's just neat. <laughs> I was so thankful somebody requested that I start a Patreon page. It's a way that you guys basically can donate to this channel. That's really the main concept is just to support all kinds of artists and people who have started Patreon pages for various reasons. But uh, I wanted to, like many other artists have, uh, want to give a little something extra to my patrons. So it's become something really neat. Uh, we have uh, contests. I have extra special content. I've arranged it all like um, like school <laughs> because I like to teach. So um, it ha we have each week we have homework assignments. We have PE patron education on Friday, and we have story reading time. So lots of fun, but. Often uh, they get a little bit more content, but I always want to give Monet Cafe, um, continue to give free content because I know there are people who would never get art lessons. I talk to people online all the time that are just so grateful because they live in a country. One person lives in a remote village in the Philippines. You literally can't even find his village on Google Maps. And he he's a patron. God bless him. <laughs> that Maxwell, hi, if you're watching this. Um, so Monet Cafe um, is really my heart. And I started it to give and to offer. And it's giving so much back to me. So thank you, patrons. And thank you, Monet Cafe subscribers. I am just... Um, really, really blessed to have this channel. Now, you may have noticed I started adding some little lighter value flowers. You notice how they're just delicate and small and um, you don't want them to be too noticeable, but they just uh, add a little bit of character to the to the painting and draw the eye back. There's also a lot of contrast. You notice the base of that large tree, how dark it is. Now, now my hand's covering it up. But you see how those little lighter flowers, they're noticeable because they are so light against the darkness. Um, that's one of the lessons we had in the Patreon page recently is uh, just how to establish a focal point. Actually, I think I shared that here on Monet Cafe as well. Just these techniques to create focal points and um, successful and uh, effective ways, I should say, to do that. Now I'm adding, I'm just kind of intermingling some um, indications of grasses. I actually kind of wish I had uh, not added so much after this point, just kept it a little bit more to a minimum because I was really liking that impressionistic feel. But uh, at this point, you notice I've had a lot of real time in this. So I'm really hoping this will help some beginners. And this painting at this point could be done, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and speed up the rest of this. I hope you've learned something here. Please let me know what you think of this. Uh, let me know again, too, if you still like this overhead technique of my camera. I know sometimes, um, now you can see a little better how I'm holding the pastel, but um, I always say you guys are Monet Cafe. You have, you're the reason why this channel is what it is because you give me such great content and suggestions and I love it. That's, that's how I know what to do. Um, you know, I have my own unique ways of doing things, but sometimes you guys will give me a recommendation. I'm like, that is a good idea. I should do that. <laughs> so, um, but let me know what you think. Um, sometimes I will still stand at my easel and uh, work, but um, I do like being able to lay my pastels out this way. I got these values back here. They're a little bit too light. Um, I, I soften them up, I think, by the end because they're just, they're making the focal point immediately go to there okay it, it's too noticeable so uh, i do tone that down before the painting's done all right now i'm really going to speed it up i'll add some music stay tuned to the end it does help when you watch to the end it helps my youtube ranking 
and if you complete the video and also um, I've talked a lot about the patreon link and I'm trying not to over advertise that so I didn't even put a little thing saying how to become a patron but there's always a clickable link at the end of this video if you'd like to become a patron and uh, also too, don't forget about the Monet cafe art group on Facebook it is a great resource for being able to uh, learn from other artists there's over 10,000 artists on there also sweet all levels you can have some super advanced artists giving you suggestions and advice it's a wonderful community all free just go to Facebook and search for Monet cafe art group and ask to be a member you have to answer a couple questions but anyway all right enjoy this uh, let me know if you like this beginner series I am gonna have more I already have a painting complete another beginner painting using just this set of pastels and again keep in mind I used only this set of pastels but in a minute you'll see where I did use a few new pastels they're they look more like long sticks and they're a little bit harder I use them just for some of the the grasses and the stems of the flowers um, see how I added some of that blue in the background there kind of really push that sky back there okay I'm really gonna play the music now but it's, it's almost over okay it's almost done so um, watch to the end and I'll be back artist I enjoyed this little painting let me know what you think about this little beginner series I will have another video coming soon please comment like this video subscribe become a patron if you like and as always happy painting